Order, representando Caracas, Venezuela, Franklin Manzanilla. A native of Venezuela. He lives and trains, however, in Colombia. He was scheduled to fight Shakur Stevenson on July 13th, but he withdrew from that fight so then he could come and fight here tonight. So, so much on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, and representing your event Armenia, please welcome Crazy Azad Hovanisia. He has energy to spare. He took up the sport of boxing at the age of 10 to burn off excess energy previously spent in street fights. And either as a kid, you say, you know what, I'm going to keep fighting in the streets. Or, like so many great fighters have done, they say, how about we get inside of a gym and do it constructively? Yeah, and it doesn't surprise me at all that he was a street fighter. Because um, he's, he's held on to that mentality, but he's added the science and craft of boxing. It's Colton time! Introducing to you first. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and white. He officially weighed in at 122 pounds. Tonight, in 23 professional contest, his record is outstanding. 18 victories, including 17 wins by knockout with five defeats. He is the WBC Silver Super Bantamweight Champion, representando Caracas, Venezuela, Franklin Manzani. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing baby blue with gold. He officially took the scale also at 122 pounds. In 20 professional bouts, his record is impressive. 17 victories, including 14 win wins by knockout, three defeats. He is the former WBC Continental America's Super Bantamweight Champion. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, and representing your event, Armenia, Crazy Hazat Hovanesia. And our referee gives the final instructions, Edward Coyantes. Gentlemen, you received your rules in the dressing room. I'm going to remind you to obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Scooch them on, because that's it, build a temple. Okay? Here and above is good. Here and above is good. Touch gloves, and remember, when I say stop, I mean stop. Let's go. Okay, there we go. The referee's instructions. And right over the shoulder of Crazy A was Freddie Roach. And anytime Freddie Roach is in your corner, because of his pedigree and the great fighters he has trained over the years, you automatically believe that his fighter has an advantage. Yeah, and, and, and that goes for the fighter himself. And Paul Venetian has never lacked for confidence, but he has more confidence fighting under the, the tutelage and guidance of Freddie Roach. And, and part of that confidence comes from the hard work he put in at that Hollywood gym, the Wild Card Boxing Club, because there's so many world-class fighters for, for hard-nosed guys like Azad to spar with. Bovinician in the baby blue with the gold trim and Manzanilla in the white with the tassels. Both of these fighters have been in there with Vargas. Both have left with a loss, but they would love nothing more than to get another shot. Yeah, both had their moments, though. Now, and, and if you look at the official scorecards, um, you know, with Manzanilla, it was a, it was a, a, a clear victory on um, points for Vargas, but keep in mind, Manzanilla was penalized two points for unsportsmanlike conduct. And there were shoves, and he came in with his head, they were punching on the brake and that kind of stuff. He 
wants to try to avoid that uh, and just stick to the clean punching and counter punching. Uh, he's very dangerous when it comes to that. 17 knockouts and 18 victories. And one of those stoppages was against a guy named Julio Ceja, who was a top contender who just gave uh, Guillermo Rigondi a run for his money. Oh, and Hovindisi already is letting those hands fly, throwing with a purpose. Tell you what, I can tell Manzanilla has a lot of power. There's a, you can hear it with uh, whenever they land. Whether they land on the arm or the glove or the forehead of Hovindisi, you can really hear it. And, uh, it says something about Hovindisi and he can walk through some of these shots. Boy, that left hand is nasty. It just keeps coming by Crazy A. And I think Manzanilla is having a hard time anticipating it because Owen Eason fights just as well from the southpaw stance as he does the orthodox stance. And he can switch his stances in mid attack. Well, Owen Eason just took a shot and then he said, hey, bring it, let's go. Boy, at this weight class, the hands are so fast. Punch output is really high. You got a lot of volume punches up here. The featherweight, the junior featherweight come back. And these guys throw a lot of punches. Inside 30 seconds here in our first round, the first of 12 schedules in the Super Bantamweight division. And Ray Vargas makes everybody look ugly, right, Doug? That's exactly what Zant and Franklin both had to say. To say, if you look at the fight against Ray Vargas, that wasn't me. Oh, wait Tonight, a we're going to come down. in and we're going to sweep for the fences. Zant said, knockout by the fifth or sixth. Franklin said, you saw me drop Ray Vargas. I got power tonight. My apologies there, Beto. Yeah, that was rolled a slip, Manzanine. And with the, the switching stances from orthodox to south father, there's going to be moments where they step on each other's lead foot. Oh! That left hand caught Franklin! Oh, and another! This time a right hand! And Crazy A has Manzanilla in trouble here in this second round. Oh! And both men throwing haymakers! Coach, Manzanilla is landing shots during these exchanges. It's just hoping he's it's taking them. I can't believe it. He's got a smile on his face, too. He's loving this. The more physical it is, the better he seems to like it. 15 seconds right there, and it was about two feet away from us here at ringside. Hoban Eason, he doesn't stop punching. No matter what angle he's at, whether he's from mid-range or on the inside, especially when he's on the inside. But he's dangerous from the outside, but it's really hard to anticipate what stance that power shot's going to come from. Is it going to be a straight left? Is it going to be a, a, a straight right? Is it going to be a body shot? Is it going to be an overhand shot? Oh, good straight right hand, and those quick, powerful hands continue to come from Hovindisian. And against Ray Vargas, Hovanesian was able to land single power shots, even from the outside. But he could only land one at a time because Vargas, apart from being really freakishly tall and rangy, he's a guy who moves a lot. So it was that lateral movement was the saving grace for the defending title holder. But Manzanilla doesn't move around like that, even though he does have the height and reach advantage. Inside one minute here in the second round, a round that has been incredibly exciting, and it has been over. Hovindisian that continues to smile and laugh and enjoy every single minute of it. Boy, we expected a, we expected a brawl. We expected high punch counts. And that's exactly what we have gotten through two rounds. Okay, this is what you call a shootout. shot to the back of the head. 
just get frustrated or if uh, they're on the brink of being overwhelmed physically the way Manzanilla is against Ovenisi, they can get desperate. And if you have it in you to do stuff like that, you know Manzanilla does, and that fighter might resort to the, the rough and tough tactics. Total punches look like this. High volume fight, but it's Ovenisi with the edge of punches thrown and landed. Ovenisi, he wants it. He wants him to throw with him. Well, he set a goal for himself, and that's a stoppage by round five or six. That's what he told Beto, a fifth round knockout. That's what he's been telling everybody. He, and he's a man of his word. Beto, what do you got? And in the corner of Masaria in Spanish, Doug was able to translate for you. They told him, don't fight his fight. Get out of the pocket. Don't just stand there and trade with him. Did you forget how to box? You came watch to out, box. Watch out. Slug. Well, so far, Crazy A has forced Manzanilla into his fight, yes. to your point. Yeah, he's pulled him into his world, which is a, a brutal world. And that, that was good advice from the corner of Manzanilla. And get some distance. Get on your toes. Try to catch this guy coming in. And he's just not able to do it. And I think part of it is, is Hovanesian style. It's, it's, not what you see every day. It is not. It is it's unrelenting. It's powerful. And it's unpredictable. Well, now, Hovanesian is trying to connect and end this thing before we even get to the fifth round. You know what a guy like Hovanesian, man, Manzani is getting rough in there. He's throwing elbows and shoulders. And the referee's going to have to really watch him. But a guy like Hovanesian, because he lets his hands go so much and he's got such a, a gutsy demeanor, um, a guy like him doesn't, doesn't get credit for his footwork, but he's got really good balance, and he's not flat-footed in there. That was a nice uh, right hand landed by Hovanesian. Um, he's really good with angles, so I can see where he would be a good fit with Freddie Roach, who did such great work with Manny Pacquiao. It was very, very raw and, and obviously dynamic when he first uh, was, was matched up with Freddie Roach. The Roach time the final front of boxing and the in and out movement, moving around at the side, giving his opponent's angles. A good final 10 or 15 seconds from both fighters. And here we go. Round number four. Remember, Homanesian said it would be a fifth round knockout. And the old saying, not leaving anything in the bag. Neither fighter has anything in their bag. A local favorite, really good crowd turned out. Homanesian here in Los Angeles, trained here in Los Angeles. Hovanesian hits somebody worth rooting for, no matter where you're from. He's all action. Uh, he's got upward potential in terms of his, his ranking and uh, his title winning potential. Oh, wow, he looked away for a second. I'm not sure what Hovanesian was looking at outside of the ring, but... Not a good idea against a puncher like this. <laughs> you may not want to do that. That was kind of weird, to be honest. Well, we move on, 145 left here in round number four. Stop!
ropes. And this is exactly what Hovindesian wants him. And now again, Hovindesian just one after another. And frankly, all he can do is duck and weave. Hovindesian is like a pit bull. What a yeah. Got him down. Manzanilla finally went down. From an accumulation of punches and punishment. Ocho, nueve. And that's it. It's over. It is over. Hovindesian was just too much. Too strong. Too fast. Basically. I mean, he's, I mean, there's, there's pressure. What do you think he was doing that here? That was weird. Yeah, you, you noted that. Something caught his attention. And that was probably the only moment for Manzanilla to do something because after that, it was all Hovindesian. He was on Manzanilla like white on rice, like a straight jacket. That's smothering pressure. That's smothering, overwhelming volume punching to the body and the head. And he doesn't really waste punches either. They're measured, there's a lot of them, and eventually Manzanilla went down and he wanted no part of continuing this fight. He was trying, but he was getting nailed with flush shots all over his, his face and his head and his ear, and there was also some body shots there that weakened the Venezuelan, and he goes down, and I think once he took a knee, he just felt the overall fatigue and just, you know, felt that his spirit was broken. For Yanthus reaches the count of 10. The official time comes to 2.58 in round number four. Ladies and gentlemen, he's set to move forward in contention for the WBA Super Bantamweight title. And your winner by knockout, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, and representing Europe and Armenia, Crazy A, Hassan, oh!